So tell us, well, what connected you to Chronicle? What what made you go, all right, I got, I got to be a part of this movie? It was the fact that I picked up the script and didn't want to put it down. It was like picking up, you know, my first comic book. You know, I read it from front to back and read it twice, and I was like, oh, my God, I love it. I need to be a part of this somehow. I don't care if it's Matt, Andrew, Steve, you know, Steve it was. But it was, uh, I just wanted to be a part of it, man. It was an excellent script. I just thought it was really exciting, and I thought that... Um, I, I think they take a really fantastical story and they really root it deeply in reality. And I really believed everything they were going through and it all made sense, but it was still such a big story. Uh, it was just definitely something I wanted to be a part of. Read through the rest of the script and the story is incredible. What happens is epic and it's all very believable and grounded in reality. And that's like, you know, everything you could want in sure. a role. The film asks the question, what are you capable of? What, what do you think you would do personally if you discovered that you had superhuman abilities? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I like maybe not throw in a cape, but I like to think that I would uh, use it for good. Um, but yeah, I'd be wary of letting that become like an ego thing. But I think anyone would be in danger of that. So you'd need people to kind of keep you in check. I think that my first reactions would definitely be, what exactly is this? Oh, okay, that's what this is well, what kind of fun can I have with this? Um, I don't think that it would necessarily take the turn that it does for Andrew. Uh, I think he has a lot uh, more of a troubled life than I do. But it's certainly at first I would do the same thing. You know, the flying in the film is really effective. It looks very grounded in reality, and and then the film achieves something that you know a lot of these big Hollywood blockbusters haven't really nailed flying down. This one seems to do that. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about your experience in the rig and stuff like that? The rig was a, uh, it, it was a uh, whatever your imagination can come up with. You know, if you want to you know die for it, nose dive. If you want to bank right, bank right. You can do that. They'll do everything for you. And the greatest thing is the visual effects will match whatever we do. So it's, we had that freedom to kind of be free and just improvise and do whatever we felt like doing. Yeah, well, there were a bunch of rigs, actually. Uh, they, did a, they designed rigs specifically for our movie because they did want to make it look different than other movies. Uh, we had one that was like a big arm and we hooked into the side. And then there was another that was like a hamster wheel gyroscope that was actually a lot of fun. And then a lot of it is um, more traditional. You're on a wire, you're going up and down, side to side kind of things. Um, but yeah, they did a really, they were really ingenious in the, the rigs and how they dealt with the flying. And it was always a priority that we wanted to treat flying uh, in a way that's never really been, we wanted to deal with it in a way that's never been dealt with before. I hadn't um, heard this until a couple of days ago, but they were talking about the concept that they used is like if you were really flying and you were up there and you had a video camera, it would be not dissimilar to like what it looks like when you're skydiving. And so I think that is, uh, sort of really infused, um, I think that just really, in, uh, you know, affected the way that they, that they went about it. They sure. imagined like skydiving, but going straight, you know. Right. You're technically the cinematographer in the film. Um, did you actually get a chance to roll camera uh, during, during takes? Uh, no, I didn't uh, operate the actual camera that the movie's actually shot on. I did... During rehearsals, I did always have my camera there, and I was always going through the shot like I would do, and I was always in conversation with the camera operator, uh, seeing what he's doing, watching playback, because um, you know his performance a lot of the time is my performance. So we did work very closely together uh, to accomplish a lot of the shots. You know, the film really kind of reaches out to that YouTube generation of people who have cameras with them all the time, and they're filming everything. Uh, do you think that that you know that uh, generation of filmmakers like Josh, who kind of had a had that success with that short on YouTube, uh, that generation of filmmakers can have a negative or positive effect on on Hollywood films? I mean, I think it'd be a mistake to like um, overwhelm Hollywood with one particular type of sure. genre or um, you know way to to kind of tackle telling a story. Uh, so I, you know, I think it's just I think it's a I think the way that they told the story is an incredible way to tell a story, uh, but it sits in its place amongst many other incredible ways to tell to tell a story, and I think they're all important. 
but I also think that this new spin on found footage that they've kind of that they've kind of achieved, I think hopefully it will take off. I think people could start seeing it as a really valid and exciting way to, to shoot a movie. In. I think that it's Hollywood's job to keep up with the times and to find things that always speak to the younger generation. Uh, but I also think it's important to honor uh, how films have been made uh, throughout history. And I think that neither of them is right or wrong and I think as time goes on, they'll find new inventive ways of making films. But, you know, obviously when you have a silent film that's super popular, I think it's, it, it shows like, hey, silent films can still be great, but so can like found footage films that are unlike anything you've seen before. Right. Matt, look at this! Oh, man.